how will Donald Trump's legal problems impact the 2024 U.S. presidential election? Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu, and this is The Heat. It's been a historic week in the U.S. with former President Donald Trump arrested and charged in New York over allegations surrounding payments to a former porn star and allegedly falsifying business records. Americans are now waiting to see how all of this may play out in the 2024 presidential election. Trump, who entered the not guilty plea, is already running for the White House again, but will his legal issues undermine the campaign or give it new energy? And what about President Biden? Will the 80-year-old run again? And if so, why is he holding off on making an announcement? Well, there is a lot to get to. And joining me now here in Washington, D.C., is Eleanor Clift. She is a political columnist with The Daily Beast. Also with us is Rena Shaw. She is a political analyst and current affairs commentator. Joining the discussion, too, is Douglas Sloan. He is principal and senior political analyst at National Capital Strategy Group. And with us from Wilmington, Delaware, is Brandon Bryce. He is a columnist and host of the conservative radio talk show, The Bryce is Right. Welcome to all of you. Eleanor Cliff, let me start with, off uh -huh. with you. Um, this has been a truly historic week in the United States. We have President, former President Donald Trump, who was indicted. He was arrested. He appeared in court. He pleaded not guilty to 34 criminal charges. But there are lots of legal experts. Um, and uh, others who've been saying that um, the case is not as strong as it's made out to be. I mean, we even heard from his former national security advisor, John Bolton, no big fan of Donald Trump, who said this. Let's listen. Speaking as someone who very strongly does not want Donald Trump to get the Republican presidential nomination, I'm extraordinarily distressed by this document. I think this is even weaker than I feared it would be. Uh, and I, I think uh, it's, it's easily subject to being dismissed or a, a, a quick acquittal for Trump. So, I don't know, um, there's been criticism across the board. Um, what do you make of it? I mean, I know you're not a lawyer, you're a journalist, but from what you know of Donald Trump, of this prosecutor, of this court in Manhattan, I mean, is this case strong enough to get a conviction? Well, uh, these feel like old allegations, and they don't go to the heart of, I think, the country's argument against this president that he tried to overturn uh, an, an election and he abused his power while in office. But having said that, we do have an independent judicial system, and the Manhattan DA has brought many cases like this, white-collar crime, if you will, and he believes he has a strong case. Uh, but the most important thing that the, uh, the the judge said in the arraignment is, see you in December. So there's not even going to be another hearing on this case until December. And if there's a trial, it would stretch into next year. And meanwhile, there are a number of other cases that are lining up that seem to be coming to fruition from the Atlanta case having to do with of the former president's attempts to find more votes in Georgia, and, of course, the Department of Justice with a special counsel having to do with the obstruction of justice in returning documents that he's not supposed to have, classified documents, and, of course, the 1-6 insurrection. And then there are also two more civil cases, uh, one in, in New York involving uh, a long-ago charge of, of sexual assault, and another in New York brought by the attorney general there uh, against the Trump organization. So the president's legal problems are going to be intimately entwined with the presidential campaign. And you can, you can figure out a number of different scenarios. You know, do the Republican primary voters really want to move ahead with somebody facing all of these legal challenges? Mm -hmm. Uh, will other candidates decide that they're going to break with Trump? I mean, I, I can write a, a number of different scenarios. I have no idea which one will turn out to be the case. Uh, Brendan Bryce, there are Trump supporters who say that he won't get a fair trial in New York. Uh, the prosecutor who's running for uh, 
who's, who's going to be mm -hmm. handling this case, uh, he made going after Trump one of his... Uh, uh, he said that, you know, during his campaign for this position. I mean, can Trump get a fair trial in Manhattan? If you ask me the looks of it, the answer is no. Uh, unfortunately, and I think this has been the sentiment, we're not saying that this guy uh, has, done, has done nothing wrong. What we are saying is morality is on trial, and the reality is the case isn't strong. I mean, if you even look at what John Bolton, who's been critical of the president since day one, he said, listen, this is not a fair trial. This bleeds politics. And again, as I said before on the show, when you have a AG and a DA who have made this a political issue, the question is, can this president truly be tried and convicted fairly? And I think most people are saying ah, the case may not be as strong as they're promoted and pushing it out to be. And what is the political impact? I mean, Donald Trump is actually running for office again. He's running for president again. Well, I think it, the political impact is if this guy's not found guilty, it continues to strengthen the brand. I know we got some folks on here who don't believe that, but the reality is it's been accusation after accusation after accusation, and the end result has been nothing. So what's happening is we're talking about free earned media, and we're talking about the fact that in days of this, this president's numbers have soared past uh, Ron DeSantis. So now we're looking at, okay, how is this, the longer he stays in the press, doesn't matter if it's bad or not, the stronger the Trump brand becomes for 2024. Now, the question is, if they're talking more about him and not what the president's doing, if I'm Biden, that's a problem. Douglas Sloan, you know, we're talking about the fairness of this trial. And as I said, you know, the prosecutor, when he was running for office, made going after Trump part of his election campaign. Now there are reports that the judge in this particular case donated to the Biden campaign. It was a very small amount. But no matter what the amount, doesn't it raise serious questions about his impartiality? I really don't feel that it does. Uh, I believe that uh, Judge Merchant donated a grand total of $15 mm -hmm. uh, to the Biden campaign, which will buy you a cup of coffee and maybe a donut in lower Manhattan. Uh, when you're looking at issues such as this, I think it's more important to look at Merchant's history. Uh, on the bench, he has been a very fair and is known as being an impartial judge that calls balls and strikes. He is not known for being partial or for uh, showing favoritism one way or the other. So I think it's more important to look at his history on the bench when asking yourselves or asking ourselves that question. And I will take some issue with uh, what Brandon Bryce said regarding the strength of this case. Remember, it was uh, Trump's DOJ, Bill Barr, that originally found Trump guilty of making these hush money payments. But, well, they didn't find him guilty, but they had found enough evidence to move forward. They did not move forward because he was president of the United States and ended up telling uh, the Manhattan DA back then to stand down. And he was under the impression that they were going to move forward, but they didn't. So this case likely has more strength than people realize. And uh, Trump is going to be dealing not with just this, not with just uh, the defamation rape case of E. Jean, e. Jean Carroll, mm -hmm. but uh, the case in uh, Fulton County regarding interfering with free and fair elections, yeah. the two DOJ cases. So this is really going to harm him as a political strategist. I can tell you, Republicans are wringing their hands mm -hmm. looking at four indictments of a uh, former president while he's running for office. Uh, to say that that's not going to harm him, uh, I, I think, would be politically naive of, at best. Of course it will. They wish they could do away with Trump and just bring in a nice, fresh, clean Ron DeSantis with no uh, uh, priors or bad history right. and as a young guy that will move forward against Joe Biden. But they're bringing in Trump. He's only a few years younger than Joe Biden has all this baggage. So, yeah, but yeah, isn't isn't really the hurt it going he, forward? Yeah, isn't the problem, uh, Douglas, the fact that after this indictment was announced, Trump actually widened his lead over his nearest rival, which is Ron DeSantis, and his fundraising efforts have gone through the roof. Yeah, but that's Republicans. This is the Republican primary we're talking about. Trump can win the Republican primary, but he can't win the general election. That's the question. 
are these indictments and all these criminal actions against him going to help pull moderate Democrats and independents? Mm -hmm. I think we all know the answer to that is no. Trump already lost in 2020 before he was under indictment. Now mm -hmm. we have four indictments, uh, different cases, and what happened on January 6th. So, uh, I mean, it, the general election is the key. He could very well win. Unfortunately for Republicans, he could very well win the Republican primary. But he's not going to win the general with all this stuff going on. Rina Shah, uh, Trump is calling this a persecution, not a prosecution. He claims uh, that Democrats are now using the legal system against him. Um, they failed to deck him down with Russia Gate, with the two impeachments, multitude of other inquiries. I mean, does he have a point when he says that? Yeah, so the phrase of uh, the year so far, it feels like, coming from the Republican side, is weaponization of the justice system. And if I had a dime for every time I've heard in the past one week or two weeks now uh, that we are no better than Venezuela or other such countries that are jailing former leaders or having these kind of issues out in the open where you see the justice system used to get someone. So that is what Trump's trying to really get people all hyped up about. And, and he succeeded in that way. And look, the sympathy boost of support does come from those who are center right and, and perhaps even went independent in the era of Trump, uh, leading the Republican Party, because these people are questioning the moment. It is so historic, it is so bombastic, mm -hmm. that it challenges the consciousness about what it means for our country moving forward. Are we going to live in this era of hyper-partisanship that we have existed in for quite some time now and allow people to go after one another for what seems like seemingly small infractions. I've heard legal experts refer to this case that Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan District Attorney, brought as something that he got Trump on on a campaign technicality, uh, campaign filing technicality. And look, if you want to zero in, we can talk about the legality of this all day. But in the court of public opinion, uh, the way I see this playing out is, is in three ways other cases, other people, and other spin. When I say other cases, it's been said many times. There are other allegations against uh, Trump that are more serious in nature when we talk about the legality of it all. And then we also have other people who has yet to enter the Republican presidential primary. We're still pretty far out. And then thirdly, the other spin. You know, when Trump ran in 2016, uh, he talked a lot about being that outsider. I am the outsider. I am the greatest. I alone can fix it. Now all we hear is, I am the victim give me more money to fuel these legal challenges. And he is getting the money, isn't he? Certainly. Uh, we have seen that boost again in fundraising for Trump world, and that is why the Republican National Committee can't seem to quit him. Mm -hmm. These elected leaders in the Senate and the House can't seem to quit him. You hear Senator Lindsey Graham, an establishment type, the very person who said that if we elect Trump as Republicans, we will be annihilating the Republican Party, in so many words. Yeah. Uh, and so this guy was on Fox News recently saying to his own fellow Americans, open your pockets up and give any money you can to former President Trump. So you have these people carrying the water because they realize how good Trump remains for fundraising for the Republican Party. They don't care about him not being able to bring, right. someone, uh, bring in new people at this point in time. Eleanor, Trump has, of course, already announced his candidacy for the 2024 election, candidacy for the Republican nomination. As far as that nomination is concerned, he's leading in the polls right now. And as I said, he's also raising a lot of money. This is what he had to say. Let's listen to him. They attacked me with an onslaught of fraudulent investigations. Russia, 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 Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Impeachment hoax number one. Impeachment hoax number two. The illegal and unconstitutional raid on Mar-a-Lago right here. But now they have really stepped up their efforts by indicting the 45th president of the United States who received <laughs> 75 million votes, which is more than any sitting president in the history of our country. So, Eleanor, listening to that, of course, we're going to hear that over and over again, the fact that, uh, as Donald Trump puts it, the uh, legal system in the country has been weaponized against him. Uh, but to Douglas Sloan's point, is that going to resonate with voters beyond the Republican base? We're in the middle of a maelstrom here. We don't know 
how these cases are going to evolve. As has been pointed out, there are likely to be three or four more indictments. And the case in New York is not just about campaign finance reform violations. It was about paying off people so that they would not reveal damaging information that might uh, cause uh, Donald Trump to lose the 2016 election. These payoffs happened less than two weeks before the election. So, uh, and Trump won by very narrow numbers in three states. And that late information certainly could have altered the outcome of the election. So it's, it's not just about uh, paying hush money. Uh, and the, the, this, this president seems to think that um, he can use the, the legal system. He has sued everybody. He spent his whole career suing people. And now these cases are coming up against him, and they will be resolved in a court of law, and he will have to testify, and he will have to give depositions, and we will see how they come out. His lawyers are not saying that the, the judge in New York is unfair or can't be trusted. They're not asking for a change in venue. He has uh, the former president has some very good lawyers around him, and he's got, he's going to need them. And will the American people buy what Trump is saying that he's victimized? That line is not bought outside of a very small base within the Republican primary electorate. He's got a hold on perhaps 25 or 30 percent of, of the voters who identify as Republicans. Uh, that may be enough to win him the nomination. It's certainly it's certainly not enough to win a national election. But I look at this man and I see what he's the damage he's done to our democracy, and it's playing with fire to think that he could get the nomination and could once again be within reach of the Oval Office. I think it's unlikely, but it's 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 unnerving to think that we as a country. Uh, can't get beyond Donald Trump and Trumpism. Brandon Bryce, do you agree with that, uh, you know, Donald Trump's assertion that he is the victim of the system here and that that plays well with just a very small part of his base, not with voters beyond that? I mean, do I agree? You know, Donald Trump is a showman. And the thing to his credit, this is something that we've seen in our living rooms and televisions for almost 30 years. Uh, the, the challenge here, though, and I want to go back to something real quick that Doug mentioned, is I, we're, we actually agree on something, is this is not a fight for necessarily the Republican movement in this country. This is a fight for independence. And the question is going to be, are independents confirmed that they feel that this president is getting a wrong shake and that they feel that this has been, that the allegations are something that a president shouldn't face? Now, let me be very clear. This creates a, a it sets a new precedent for this nation, because if we start where we're holding presidents accountable and we're actually uh, uh, questioning the things that presidents do, which could cost them in jail, now we're saying, well, does the same thing happen with Hillary Clinton, where we need to go back and look at some things that may not have been done? Does the same thing happen now with Hunter Biden, who's being looked at by the feds? And so it, it creates a sentiment of now, if we start here, how far do we need to go back? And so you know, the, the, the reality of this is I think the Republican movement has to make a decision, and I agree that, yes, he may be able to win the nomination. He may win the primary, but 2024 is right around the corner. Yeah. Is it Donald Trump that the party wants to set their laurels on? And then the other part is, is the Biden presidency strong enough to even run again? So I think there's a lot of factors coming in here that the both Republicans and even Democrats are going to have to decide who their leaders are going to be in 2024. Brandon, one other thing is that as these legal challenges uh, mount up against Donald Trump. I mean, is it going to drag him down or is it going to give his campaign more oxygen, as we've seen? More juice. Here, here's the reality. There's no such thing as bad press. Press is press. You know that. You're in the press. Yeah. But I also say that, that uh, this is a situation where if they're talking about him and not the other guy, meaning the current president, it gives him an advantage. America loves a comeback story. Mm -hmm. And I think this, if he can pull this off, hook or crook, this will be the greatest comeback in American political history. Mm -hmm. Douglas, I'm going to get to a point that Brandon mentioned a moment ago, and that this arrest of Donald Trump, this indictment, has set a precedent right now. It's the first time a former American president has been indicted in this way. Um, 
I mean, what are the risks in setting a precedent like this? I mean, are we going to see in the future, when the Republicans are in control, are we going to see indictments against perhaps Hillary Clinton, as Brandon mentioned, perhaps George W. Bush, uh, Barack Obama, for that matter? Well, I think there is a stark difference there regarding uh, the indictments. Uh, first off, regarding setting a precedent, yes, this is a precedent for the United States, uh, being the oldest democracy in the world. Uh, we've never had a president under indictment or conviction. Mm -hmm. But if you look at other civilized nations, this is nothing new, even so much as you go to Israel, France, Italy, all had presidents under indictment and some convictions in moving forward. And they're moving forward so just fine. So it's really just a matter of, you know, hey, it's gonna eventually it's gonna happen. It's our turn for our president, for our former president to be under indictment. Uh, regarding what you were saying of uh, uh, the Republicans may be, this setting a precedent now, Republicans may be trying to indict Hillary and go back and indict Hunter. Listen, no one has the engaged in the type of criminality that we've seen from Donald Trump. Uh, remember, this isn't something that's out of the blue. Uh, all of the people that are around Trump, or rather many of the people that are around Trump, have already gone to jail or in prison right now. Paul Manafort, Michael Cohen, mm -hmm. Alan Weisserman, uh, Weisserman uh, all of his, a lot of his top guys, his political uh, associates, uh, people that worked on his campaign, people that worked uh, for his company, yeah. have gone to jail and prison. So it's just, and they all have Donald Trump in common. It's just a matter of time before some of this criminality uh, turns back on Donald Trump. So mm -hmm. we're never going to see, I don't even think we'll ever see a Republican president that has been involved in the type of, the type of criminality that Trump has been involved in. Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking about setting a president, trust me, you're never going to see a Democratic president involved in all the stuff, uh, seditious conspiracy, uh, defamation rape case, uh, 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 trying to interfere in a free and fair election. What about uh, Douglas? Douglas, Douglas, what about yeah? What about war crimes that Democrat presidents have been accused of? Uh, well, that's something else. That uh, the thing is regarding war crimes, you know. When you're talking about war in this country, that is an act of Congress. Uh, the president cannot uh, declare war on his own. So that seeps into a whole nother matter there, because when the president declares war, the United States engages in uh, a wartime activity or military uh, actions overseas, uh, generally the president has uh, the blessings in the vote of the U.S. Congress. Doesn't make, it doesn't make it legal, though, does it? Uh, it, it depends on the particular crime. It depends on uh, what's happening. It depends on what they're being accused of. Okay. So, uh, I mean, that's a, a totally different issue that you would need to examine and go into if you're going to talk about persecution of war crimes. Okay. I don't think that's going to come from Congress. That's going to come from outside of the United States. Right, right. Rena, very quickly, I'm going to go to uh, one final point on Donald Trump and that. Uh, do you think he's now a lot to win the Republican nomination, or could there be a comeback from people like Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley, the former governor? Well, it should be stated, Ron DeSantis hasn't even entered the primary, so what are we talking about here? The word comeback should not be used at this point in time. It's a ridiculous word when we're talking about the Gen Z voter coming up and how important they are to American elections now. I mean, look at the hand they played in Joe Biden's election to the White House. And so I think what we're talking about here is, is too early, too fast, too loose, too ridiculous, because this is how people like to talk about Trump. Yeah. He makes headlines, he takes up a lot of time, and it is absolutely actually really awful for democracy that we continue to have this conversation here in the United States. That man is a fool. He's a narcissist. He is a, he's every problem that you can have under the sun for the Republican Party. And the Republican Party's elected leaders also know that the sooner they divorce himself from him uh, from excuse me, the sooner they um, divorce themselves from Donald Trump, the yeah. better the brand will be. And I think that it's, it's important that we should look at other leaders. We should look at who's coming up the ranks, because we do this in American politics too much. We don't have yeah. limits enacted. 
at the federal level in the way they ought to be. We have big money in U.S. politics. We're ger we've gerrymandered the heck out of our states. We need more independent redistricting commissions. Yeah. These are the conversations I'm yearning to have as, a, as somebody that is really is independently minded and genuinely believes that the U.S. needs to be talking to its peers, its allies, and even its, its adversaries. The more to oxygen we give that almost oxygen right. in Donald Trump, the worse we're doing for these United States. And I think okay. the whataboutism here is so heavy that it's nauseating, and the Republican leadership will come to a point in a few weeks' time or a few months' time where they have to have a real reckoning and decide who yeah. are they going to put up against the Democrats. I fully believe it'll be Governor Don Ron DeSantis, and okay. I fully believe he has a great shot at the nomination. Okay. Uh, Eleanor, uh, we've just got a few <laughs> minutes left, but I want to get to Joe Biden. He's not yet formally announced his uh, candidacy, but uh, is it Biden or bust for the Democrats? I don't see any obvious alternative, and I don't see any indication that uh, President Biden isn't going to move ahead. I think Democrats quietly are looking around to make sure they have some candidates who could step up quickly, should uh, some turn of events make that uh, requirement. And I would, the California governor would be one of them, uh, the Illinois governor would be another, just to name two. But nobody is going to supplant uh, Joe Biden at this point. He's had a remarkably successful record. If he wants to run again, everybody is saying he should be allowed to. And the fact that he's not getting any attention now mm -hmm. and all the attention is on Trump, actually, that's good for Biden because yeah. uh, he's the anti-Trump. He's normalcy. Uh, Trump out there is reminding everybody what they didn't like about the previous four years. So I think Biden is in a good position now. There's no rush for him yeah. to, to announce, and he wants to look as apolitical as possible while he's dealing with a lot of crises yeah. uh, in, in the country. I just want to get to one point very quickly, Alan. I've only got 30 seconds. I mean, when you talk about a backup plan, I mean, if uh, you know Biden has health issues, and if he has to withdraw because of these health issues, I mean, what's well, what's the backup plan? I mean, is Kamala Harris well, part of the backup I, I don't, plan? I don't think he has health issues. Um, he just got a clean bill of health. Uh, so there's nothing there to, suggesting that he's not going to be able to go forward. And the, the backup plan is some very popular Democrats who are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, they could rev up a primary process, I guess. Right. There's no need for that at this point. There's no, no nobody significant is is challenging uh, Biden and the Democrats are are happy right okay. now watching the Republicans destroy each other. Okay, we are going to have to leave it there. Thanks to all of you for being with us. You've been watching the Heat. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington D.C. Thank you for watching. of the overwhelming wave of information means cutting through the noise to shine a light on the heart of the story and making room for new perspectives.